elements. The, the big thing, things, right. The big things, right. You have to get the backbone of the house right. You get that very, very simple, very, very clean and very honest. And that's what they've done here. They've refurbished what they can refurbish. They've put in new where they can. And then they have injected fun into the house. And that's what George and Sinead need to do. No, I bet you didn't even notice the cow yet, have you? The big bull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. You can then have a bit of fun with it yeah. and inject your personality into it. I feel really naive right now. Why? Like, why would you feel naive? I it's not know, your job. I know, you know, I know. It's like, this is... This is well, we were close-minded about it before. You know, when you, when you look at somewhere like this, I think you realise, wow, actually, well, it can all work, but I think... Well, you have a particular I style in mind, stuck. and you, you kind of think the whole house should fit that style. At the beginning, I was very much about a modern house, you were very much about an old house. Will we go for a contemporary or older style? We felt like there would have to be a compromise. I suppose this has kind of given us an idea that we don't have to now, and potentially we can have the best of all worlds. I don't think Sinead could visualise the end result, and I think we're slowly getting towards it. I think um, today has been definitely beneficial. It was good today. It was good because she realises how to get to the end of the project. Finally, a breakthrough. Surely now, with George and Sinead galvanised and confident, nothing stands in the way of driving this bill to completion. Nothing, apart from a long tailback of pending decisions. How do we end up here? Um, indecision. George and Sinead and Dermot, it's, it's, uh, it's a builder's nightmare, really. What was meant to be a 16-week build? I mean. How far over are we now? Like, what, I don't no, even know what week this is now, now, but it's like six months. There comes a point where you're thinking, why, why is this happening, you know? And to be honest, I think we're becoming so bored with it all. And the reality is we're getting nowhere fast. We still don't have first fix electrics, tiles, floors. You can chase and chase and chase and you get blue in the face and nothing happens. Yeah, we have to be in in four weeks. There's no... There's no ifs, buts or maybes, really. Do you know, we just have to be. We we'll put the long evenings in, Saturdays, Sundays, whatever it takes to get over the line. As long as George, Sinead and Dormit are up for it, we can get this done. Rebuilt from the ground up, but losing none of its 19th century charm, the Coach House Mark II is complete. With an entirely new room layout, the house that for six months George and Sinead refused to give up on. The house they saw stripped back to its bare stone walls has been reborn as a warm, welcoming family home. This has been a journey. It was a design and build because we were designing this project while we were building it. So everything was up for grabs, everything was up for question, everything was up for discussion and everything was up for compromise the whole way through it. I pinched and I scraped and I pushed and it was literally down to the length of my hand, moving walls tiny bit by tiny bit to grab as much space back as I could. By reclaiming the hall and pushing it out slightly, it meant that the kitchen and the dining space could be two individual spaces by themselves. The main family space finally works. We're thrilled. No, we never envisaged it to be this nice. It's just such a great day. I think we've waited for this for a long time now, so we couldn't be happier. When George and Sinead bought this house, they definitely bought it with their heart. They didn't buy it with their head. They bought this house with their heart. And the project was driven by a vision derived out of love for the building. Look at this. <laughs> we have a finished building. I know, I know. I think we can't believe it. <laughs> I really wanted to deliver a house at the end of it that they still loved. I didn't want to deliver a compromise. More than any other client that I think I've ever dealt with, you had, especially Sinead, no offence, George, fine, like <laughs> <laughs> had not an image, but a feeling that yeah. you, you really, 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 really wanted to achieve. And it was kind of your heart was desiring that more than anything. I know. How has it worked out that way? I actually can't think that I could be happier with oh, well, all of the, the problems that happened and everything. It doesn't look like any of those problems happened because it still looks like we were able to spend on the actual design of the house rather yeah. than fixing the problems yeah. that were there. So I, I can't believe it. I think it's like if your child was doing something wrong, do you know, or if they were behaving wrongly, you would never love it any less. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You would probably love it more because you'd want to fix it more even, you know? They never gave up on the house. They never gave up on their dream. And I really think it stands to them. This is when you kind of lost the run of yourselves on a, <laughs> on a day. Creating the double height space has given this room the drama. It's 
fantastic. I'm so glad we raised the roof, <laughs> raised the roof up this spot because I think this makes the house special. It was kind of, oh God, do you know something? We'll, we need a bit of happiness. We need here. a bit of happiness. <laughs> it was an impulse buy. I would rather be sitting here in this space and loving the, the feel in this mm. room than to have a spare, know to have, that you have a spare bedroom upstairs. Yeah. You know, you don't, we don't really need it. And no. if we ever need it, we can use another room. And the mezzanine. I know. Yeah, Yay. I love this. This is my space, I think. It's your yeah. space. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be no one else going up there. <laughs> I mean, there's not a room in the house or a space in the house where I wouldn't like to be. But one thing you can't miss when you're here is the antlers. Do you love them? I love them. And I know everyone else doesn't really love them. Well, they're rustic. Oh, they're rustic, all right. <laughs> <laughs> George doesn't like them either. But... Do you not like them, George? No, I do. Such uh, a liar. I, I don't know. I think it might have been better in the wooden room. Or in the shed. <laughs> We're going to miss Dermot actually next week when, yeah, when we don't see him. Strange. It's, it's so weird. <laughs> the fact that you love them, they have to go right into the middle of the house yeah. so you can see them from everywhere. Yeah, no, we've got on great with them. It's been good fun as well. Working with somebody who's so passionate about something, he's just such an infectious person because he loves things so much. It's, it's a good way to keep fresh, you know. The wooden room. The wooden room. Well, because you, you always had this vision of a timber clad room. Yeah. We never had the money to do that. <laughs> I know. It was nearly a wooden room without wood. Without wood. But I think I love the panelling in here. I love it. Mm. I, I can see exactly the, the the nights I'll have in here. You know, I, I know it's 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 fit for, for purpose now, you know. It's mm. it's what we wanted. You didn't get your big American style fire, I but know. the stove works really well in you here. You know it does. And I think at, at the stage that we were talking about these fires, it was like you know, there was this big drama about another thing. I was like, and now even the fire that I wanted was a problem. But I think it was more the fact that it was another problem that yeah. annoyed me than the actual sto having a stove. It's a lovely stove. I love the, the, the feeling of right. it. At the deer's head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can throw things, hats and stuff up there. It works in here. I hope it is standing for another 50 years. I mean, this house belongs to Maynooth, I think. You know, we're merely the custodians of it now, and it was our job to kind of put her back together a little bit. I love my, my wardrobe. The wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, and I love the fact that it's all, you know, behind closed doors now, and I don't and even have to fold them all. You've got your makeup station. <laughs> Yay. Well, I'm proud. Like, I'm definitely proud of George. Why? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I am though. Yeah, no, but I think we're proud of each other. She has the vision. I suppose I have the practical side, and that's why we work together quite well. Yay! <laughs> and look at who we have. Mommy, thank you. <laughs> so what, what do you do, you do with Mammy in, in the bedroom? bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> It's great to be here today and see it finished because at some stages you did kind of think, God, will we ever see an end to this, to be honest with you? Will we ever get ourselves and dig ourselves out of this hole? Because at one stage it was a hole and we were all in the hole together. But it's done, it's complete. We've done it right. We've left an old building breed. We've rewired, replumbed. It's become a comfortable home. It was never that before. For 205 grand, I would hope this is it. Safe, sound and secure for decades to come. Well, Ian, you're breathing a sigh of relief today. <sighs> It was just hardship for the first couple of months here. Uh, but tonight you see uh, George, Nate, Daniel here enjoying it and loving it. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Well, I say thank you for the experience. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big learning curve. I've never ended up with everything in the bin, <laughs> including the building. Whoa. Yeah! Well, on our behalf, I want to thank everybody as well. Ian, Patricia. Dermot. Dermot. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't forgotten. How could I forget? We'll never forget you, Dermot. Well, Thank you. Sure. So to the whole team. Yeah. This was one hell of a project, but George and Sinead always had faith in this building. They bought this house with their heart, and it was that very thing that kept them going right until the very end. They had a dream for this place, and I really hope I have delivered something close to that, because, do you know something? They so deserve it. Next time in a special edition, three of Dermot's favourite projects revisited. This room may change, I'll explain in a minute. No one pisses on my chips. Captain, after all, we want to get that win. These bills were as much about the clients as the architecture, and that thought 
makes me nervous. Shoes of us. <laughs> Shoes of us. Just all right. to take part in the next series of Room to Improve, email info at cocotelevision.ie or call 01 497 0817.